All right, for those of you who don't know what we do here, we love football. We're Lions fans. We don't hide that. But we love talking about the teams that the national media doesn't talk about as much. And after the Falcons' awesome win a week ago on Thursday night football against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, there was something that kept ringing in my head, something I kept thinking about, and that is that the the Falcons have caught an unexpected break. Now I'm going to talk to you about this and a lot of it has to do with the schedule, but it also has to do with Cousins and I'm going to tell you why the Falcons are in an even better position. I truly think they're in an even better position than even I thought they were in to win this division um, and of course make the playoffs. And so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Kirk Cousins. We are going to talk about Zach Robinson, his offensive coordinator, and we're going to talk about how everything came together even faster than I anticipated and why I thought this was going to be a problem for them in the beginning of the year, but it ended up not being a problem. So no more talking in hieroglyphics and riddles and rhymes. Let's actually tell you what I'm talking about. So here is their schedule. The NFL, one thing they started doing two years ago was they started to backload um, divisional games at the back end of the schedule. So generally you would see in the last few weeks here, weeks 13, 13 through 18, these last six games, those usually at least three of them, half of those games would usually be divisional games. If you don't believe me, at least two, sometimes three. If you don't believe me, look around the schedules in the NFL. However, the Atlanta Falcons schedule does not set up that way. In fact, it's set up where in their first six weeks, they play three of their six divisional games. Remember, you have four teams in your division. You'll play each team twice. And they play them back-to-back-to-back weeks. So they just got a victory over New Orleans. They just got a victory over Tampa Bay. And now they're heading into the lowly Carolina Panthers where I hope they get a victory. Why is this an unexpected break? When the schedule first came out and I saw that they had front-loaded divisional games and, by the way, three playoff teams ahead of it, I was like, ooh, this is not a good schedule for them. I was thinking two and four, three and three best-case scenario. Why? Because Kirk Cousins is coming off of a torn Achilles. Like, there were even talk, remember? There was talk about, is Kirk Cousins healthy? Like, is he going to play when the regular season starts? And by the way, I'm just going to throw this out there. Big fan of Kirk Cousins. Love who he is. Love what he stands for. Um, we're Detroit fans. I'm from West Michigan. He grew up in West Michigan. I don't like him because he grew up here. In fact, it's hard for me to admit I like Kirk Cousins. I'm a U of M fan. He went to Michigan State. But Kirk Cousins is a good person who does things the right way. Yes, he is a Christian as well. And I just think it's hilarious that he tears his Achilles after Aaron Rodgers did. He tore it later in the season last year than Aaron Rodgers, and yet he's the one that looks even healthier than Aaron Rodgers. We all wondered, like, oh, his cousin's going to recover. He looks okay to the tune of 509 yards. He looks perfectly healthy and doing well. It is great to see him have that success. So I thought it was going to be a slow start with him. I thought when you have a new head coach, it was going to be a slow start with the new head coach. You have a new offense under a new offensive coordinator in Zach Robinson. How is all this going to come together? And by the way, it didn't all gel perfectly right away. Um, It didn't gel against Pittsburgh, who we found out later has a great defense. Against Philly, you did enough to win. You did enough to win. Against the Chiefs, great defense wasn't coming together and then all of a sudden in the last two games you started seeing it against the Saints and then it was unleashed against a very very weak Tampa Bay secondary it was a very weak Tampa Bay secondary and now you get to go up and do the same against a Carolina inferior Carolina opponent so they have figured it out how have they been able to figure it out so fast with Kirk Cousins I wonder he has to be in the right type of system he has to be in that kind of McVay, Shanahan, whoever tree you want to give it responsibility for, that's the tree Kevin O'Connell came out of. One thing most people may not know, all right, your new offensive coordinator, Zach Robinson, was with the L.A. Rams. All right, you probably knew that he came from L.A. 
What you might not know is not only was he with the Rams, but he was the quarterback's coach when former Kirk Cousins offensive or head coach Kevin O'Connell, an offensive coordinator, was the OC with the Rams. This is a very similar system. It's going to be same language, all of that kind of stuff. It makes the transition into a new offense for Kirk Cousins easier. And when you have a quarterback and an offensive coordinator that are on the same path, it makes it easier. Also, little things that nobody thinks about. With the NFL preseason only being three games and with with teams really not playing their starters at all, the entire NFL, have you noticed this over the last couple of years? The first two or three games, at least, some teams it lingers into four or five, but at least the first two or three games, teams come out of the gates really slow, especially in the passing game. They're trying to get their timing down. They're trying to figure things out. So while the Falcons were trying to figure things out, so was everybody else. And so they were able to get there. Now, um... One thing that I want to talk about as I go back to this schedule. All right, if you can start 3 and 0 in the division and 4 and 2, right? You're going to be in first place, right? If you get this win over Carolina, you're going to remain in first and then you get to have some fun against some other teams. You're going to have Seattle, but it's at home. All right? That is a good thing. And by the way, Seattle is going to be tired. All right, they just play. I know that I think they're Thursday night, but they just played three games in like 10 days. It's There could be a little hangover there for Seattle. Then you get to go back to Tampa Bay. You have Dallas at home. It's hard to play Dallas at Dallas. All right, then you go to New Orleans. Then you have what is some of your, hey, this is good. It's AFC West schedule because you're playing the AFC West this year. You got the Broncos who, like, they're not bad, and it's at mile high, which is hard, but at the same time, I think you outclass them at this point. I think you're further along. You have the Chargers. Chargers' depth is a problem, so you don't know how banged up that team's going to be coming in. You have to go to Minnesota. That's tough. The Raiders are dumpster fire right now. They are. New York's starting to look better, but you get them at home, right? Who knows what Washington's going to be at that time? They're phenomenal right now. We know that. Love seeing what Jaden Daniels is doing, but can the rookie continue to play really, really well throughout the entirety of his first year? And then the beauty of it is you end the season against the Panthers. There are no gimme games in this schedule outside of the Carolina games. That is true. But there are no games that aren't winnable. Like you have to imagine Minnesota is going to come back to life to an extent at some point point right you have to imagine that will happen there are no games where it's just like oh yeah that's a loss the closest thing to it is minnesota at minnesota so the unexpected break here is you got your division games early in the year and then middle of the year rather than all of them at the end of the year and so you've got and you found a way to win them even though you're still adjusting I think this is a team that's only going to continue to get better. And when I look at this defense, this is a defense that has talent. Like, this is a defense that has talent with Simmons and Bates in the back end, right? You got Judon in here now. Like, are you kidding me? This is a defense that has talent. They're not going to continue to give up a ton of points. This defense is going to win some games. Now the offense is set up to win some games. Uh Four and two, let's hope, after this week. And I think this is a team that's headed straight for 10, 11, 12 wins. Let's look at it that way. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope you like the content. If you made it to the end of the video, hit that subscribe button so you can know when other Falcons videos are being put out. Or if you just love the NFL and you love talking ball. All right. Thanks for watching. See ya.